quick physics tutorial. Hi, I'm Alex. In this video, we will discuss on the topic of significant figures and uncertainties. This topic may seem not important to many, but this is very relevant to scientists, researchers, engineers and anyone working with analytical data. When working with analytical data, it is important to be certain, that we are reporting the correct number of significant figures. And these significant figures, or our best estimate, must be close to the true value of the data. To make our measurement valid and reliable, we must pair our best estimate with its uncertainty. Uncertainty adds value to the data, in allowing the user to make judgments as to the validity of the data reported, with respect to the number of its significant figures. So, in order to have a reliable measurement, we must have our best estimate, and our uncertainty combined. To start with, let us have some rules for significant figures. But before that, let me give you a short vocabulary of terms. If I have this value, 0 0.00200430, these zeros here are called, leading zeros. While these zeros located in its tail are what we called, trailing zeros. And of course, digits 2, 4 and 3, are non-zero digits, and zeros sandwiched by two non-zero digits are called, in-between zeros. Now, going back to the rules for significant figures. Rule number 1. All non-zero and in-between zeros, are significant. If I have 0 0.00200043, the significant digits are all non-zero digits, so we'll count in, digits 2, 4 and 3, including in between zeros. So, for this value, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 significant figures. The same thing if I have 20,043. It will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 significant figures. Rule number 2. Leading zeros don't count. If I have 0 0.0043, these zeros don't count. So, it will only have two significant figures. Rule number three. Trailing zeros count, if there is a decimal point. If I have 0 0.004300, zeros located at the tail of the value, are considered significant. So, for this value, we have one, two, three, four, four significant figures. Rule number four. Trailing zeros may or may not count, if it is a whole number. If I have 4,300, I could have two up to four significant figures. Why is this so? For 4,300, we could write it in a form of scientific notation, like 43 times 10 to the power of 2, to have two significant figures. 4.3 times 10 to the power of 3, to have two significant figures. 4.30 times 10 to the power of 3, to have three significant figures. 43.0 times 10 to the power of 2, to have three significant figures. 4.300 times 10 to the power of 3, to have four significant figures. 43.00 times 10 to the power of 2, to have four significant figures. Or 430.0 times 10 to the power of 1, to have four significant figures. So, we vary the decimal places and scientific notation, but the value is still the same. Moving on to rule number 5. When adding or subtracting numbers, we must round its final answer, to the least number of decimal places. If I add 1.123, plus 2.1, we get 3.223. But its final answer must be 3.2, because 2.1 has one decimal place, and it has the least number of decimal places. Same thing with subtraction. If I subtract 2.1 to 1.123, we get 0 0.977. But its final answer must be in one decimal place. So, we round up 0 0.977 to 1.0 because of the digit 7 next to digit 9. Remember that when rounding off numbers, the next adjacent digit must be 4 below. For example, if I want to round 3.223, to one decimal place, the answer should be 3.2. And when rounding up numbers, the next adjacent digit must be 5 and above. For example, if I want to round 1.977 to one decimal place, 
The answer should be 2.0. If I want around 1.157 to one decimal place, the answer should be 1.2. If I want around 1.157 to two decimal places, the answer should be 1.16. And for the last rule, rule number six, when multiplying or dividing numbers, we must round the answer to the least number of significant digits. That is, if I multiply 1.123 to 2.1, we get 2.3583. But its final answer must be 2.4, because 2.1 has two significant digits, and has the least number of significant digits. Once again, from 2.3583, since the next adjacent digit of 3 is 5, we round up its number to 2.4. Same thing with division, if I divide 2.1, to 1.123, we get 1.8699911. But its final answer must be in two significant digits. So, we round up 1.8699911 to 1 1.9 because of the digit 6 next to digit 8. Moving on to uncertainties, there are two ways to think about an error. These are accuracy and precision. Accuracy refers to how close a measurement is to the true or accepted value while precision refers to how close measurements of the same item are to each other. Precision is independent of accuracy. That means it is possible to be very precise, but not very accurate. And it is also possible to be accurate without being precise. A classic way of demonstrating the difference between precision and accuracy is by using a dartboard. Think of the bullseye of a dartboard as the true value. The closer the darts land to the bullseye, the more accurate they are. If the darts are neither close to the bullseye, nor close to each other, there is neither accuracy, nor precision. If all of the darts, land very close together, but far from the bullseye, there is precision, but not accuracy. If the darts are all about an equal distance, spaced equally around the bullseye, there is mathematical accuracy, because the average of the darts is in the bullseye. This represents the data as accurate, but not precise. However, if you were playing actual darts, this would not count as a bullseye. If the darts land close to the bullseye and close together, there is both accuracy and precision. In accuracy, we write its measured value by placing our best estimate number, the symbol plus minus, and a second number, indicating the uncertainty of the measurement. In many cases, the uncertainty of a number is not stated explicitly. If this happens, the uncertainty of a number falls on its last digit. For example, a measurement of 3.41 millimeters has an uncertainty of 0.01 millimeter. And it is written as 3.41 millimeters plus minus 0.01 millimeter. This gives us the confidence that the actual value for the physical quantity being measured lies between 3.40 mm and 3.42 mm. Another way of expressing accuracy of measurement is in terms of its fractional error and percent error, also known as fractional uncertainty and percent uncertainty. For example, if the diameter of a coin cell is labeled as 2 cm plus minus 0.01 cm, the fractional error is 0.01 cm over 2 cm, or about 0.005. Its percent error is 0.005 times 100, or about 0.5%. That means, the diameter of a coin cell differs from 1.99 cm by no more than 2.01 cm. Another way to increase your confidence in experimental data is to repeat the same measurement in multiple trials. This is where precision comes in. In precision, statistics is required to get a more sophisticated estimate of the uncertainty. When dealing with repeated measurements, there are three important statistical quantities to consider, the average or mean, the standard deviation, and the standard error of the mean. The average or mean is an estimate of the true value of the measurement done in a set of trials. We obtain its average by adding all the data points in a set of trials and dividing them by the number of trials. The standard deviation tells how scattered the data points are to the mean. We obtain its standard deviation by using this formula. Sigma equal to the square root of the summation 
of the square difference of each data point, to the population mean, over n total number of entire data points. This is known as the population standard deviation. However, if out from the entire data points, we will just get a sample, or a portion of the entire data points, our standard deviation will become, s, equal to the square root of the summation, of the square difference of each data point, to the sample mean, over n total number of sample data points, minus 1. This is known as the sample standard deviation. The lower the standard deviation, the closer the points are from the mean. The higher the standard deviation, the scatter the points are from the mean. Finally, from the set of measurements. If we add more sets of measurements, which imply a multiple of means, the standard error of the mean, is the standard deviation of all the means. It tells how close and related the means are, to the average of all means. The lower the standard error, the closer the means are, from the average of the means. The higher the standard error, the scatter the means are, from the average of all means. Wrapping them up. In reporting measurements, we must consider the rules for significant figures. Rule number one. All non-zero and in between zeros are significant. Rule number two. Leading zeros don't count. Rule number three. Trailing zeros count if there is a decimal point. Rule number four. Trailing zeros may or may not count if it is a whole number. Rule number five. When adding or subtracting numbers, round your final answer to the least number of decimal places. And rule number six. When multiplying or dividing numbers, round your final answer to the least number of significant digits. Lastly, we add uncertainties to give validity to the data. So we can check if the measurement is either accurate, precise, or both. For your problem exercise, write down how many significant figures are there on each item below. Write your handwritten solution in a clean sheet of paper, with your signature over your printed name. Then, take a picture of your paper, and submit via Google Classroom. Deadline is posted in your respective Google Classroom classes. Please check your solution, and clear your handwriting prior to submission. Thank you guys, and see you in our next video. Did you like our video? Please send your support by hitting like, share, and subscribe. Thank you guys.